Alright guys, next video we're going to do a flashing bit using a couple timers. Uh, you've seen in some of my Siemens videos that I've used uh, a clock bit in order to flash the light on and off. I've looked on uh, the Allen Bradley and I have not been able to find that, which is a little bit frustrating. Um, actually at the moment, my favorite so far is still Siemens. I still enjoy the Siemens environment a little bit better than, uh, than the Allen Bradley. Um, but it really doesn't matter what I think because I need to learn the Allen Bradley because that's what's used in North America. Not as much uh, the Siemens, although I do find the Siemens product to be a little bit more user friendly, but that's also because I haven't spent too much time with the Allen Bradley. All right guys, so let's get going here. Uh, I've got my base PLC program open. Uh, so I just wanted to highlight this, that you should have a base PLC program set up. Uh, and then all we're just gonna do is, uh, is resave it, right? So I'm just gonna do, uh, what, flashing bit. So I'm using my base PLC program, I'm saving it as a flashing bit. I need to put a, not a space there. Does not like the spaces, beautiful. Okay, so now I've got all the settings, not that there are there many settings for our programs, uh, but I've got all, everything set up in order to talk to my PLC. All right guys, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have a start push button. So we'll use one of these guys. And what bit was I gonna use? I'm gonna use input uh, one. So I'm gonna go to my inputs here. I'm gonna go to my data, beautiful. Okay, let's change the operand description. So this one's gonna be my start push button. Beautiful. Uh, and then I'm going to go to an on delay timer. See how that nothing's coming up at the moment? I'm going to click on the, the rung now, and now I can grab my on delay timer. Beautiful. And this guy, I'm going to label light on. Something fancy. There we go. Uh, remember that by setting that, um, like putting that name in there, it doesn't create the tag, right? It says undefined tag light on. So I'm going to click on this guy. And I'm going to sit, hit cl click new light on, okay? And I'm going to create this and it's already set, set up as a timer there. Beautiful, now I can set my presets there. Um, so I'm just going to set this for 500 milliseconds or half a second there, okay? So I'm going to have that guy turn on an on delay timer. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to build up, um, you see me looking at my notes here, I'm trying to build up uh, a a program here that I thought would work but didn't end up uh, working and then we'll uh, we'll build up and add something else so I'm gonna have another XIC here and I'm gonna use light on uh, but I'm gonna use the TT so I'm gonna use that bit there if I click on this guy you can see here that I've got the light on tag and then it has the preset the accumulate the enable and the TT and the done bit so I'm going to use the timer timing bit uh, and I'm going to have that turn on my output there okay and I'm going to have this one and I'm going to output number one okay and we'll change the main operating description okay Beautiful. Okay, uh, so now what we have is we have a start push button, input number one, uh, that's gonna turn on an on delay timer. The on delay timer is only gonna be set for half a second. Uh, and then while it's timing, I want it to turn on a light. But I need something to, um, to turn this timer on and off, right? So I put in, um, I'm gonna put in an XIO here. And I'm gonna say, as long as it's not done timing so I'm going to do that light on timer again and I'm going to use the done bit there okay so that's uh, at the moment that's true right so my start push button I can press that's going to go to my timer timer is going to set then when the done bit sets then this will no longer be true and it should reset the timer there so my hope in creating this is that it's going to flash uh, the light on and off. So let's download that to our PLC and see if it's gonna work. I've already alluded to the fact that it's not gonna work. What's going on? Okay, there's my PLC. Let's try downloading to it. Beauty, I'm not sure what I did there, but everything seems to be cool. Uh, so I'm waiting for the input on the start push button. So that's my input number one. So I'm gonna turn that on uh, right now. Okay, so that turns on. And it seems to be doing random values. Then when I let go of it, then it turns off, right? Because obviously the start push button has to be true. Um, 
but I'm going to hit that start push button again. Um, and it seems like the values are coming in, right? I got 399, 410 that seem to be all over the map, right? So what's happening is that it's, it's like go, the accumulated value is going up to 500 milliseconds and then resetting it. So we're just seeing random values that are coming in here. Uh, and it seems like it's happening too fast in order to, uh, to flash, right? Let's see if we change this value to, um, let's change this to 2000 milliseconds. And that doesn't seem to do anything either, right? It's charging up to two seconds, then resetting, and it doesn't seem to be visually flashing that light, right? My output number one. And when I look at output number one, it's a solid uh, yellow light. There's no flashing whatsoever. So it looks like we need to make some changes to this bad boy. So let's go offline here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have, um, I'm gonna have make, make use of two timers. So I'm gonna have two on delay timers. Uh, so I need another rung here, okay? So I'm gonna have this timer turn on the next timer. So let's put in uh, a bit right here, come on. Uh, and let's have that turn on another timer, okay? So this guy is gonna be my light off because maybe I need to set the timing that it's on and off. Oh, I, see, I can't put in my 500 milliseconds yet because I have neglected to create this tag here. So I'm gonna do new light off. Okay, I'm gonna create that guy. That's my timer, beautiful. Now I can set my preset. There we go. Okay, and then uh, this is my light on, right? So I say my light on. And when it's done timing, then I want to, let's see what happens with like, whether it's case sensitive here. No, it looks good. Okay, so it's grabbed that light on and the done bit from that guy. Okay, so when I hit the start push button, it's gonna turn on the timer. Timer's gonna time out for half a second. That's gonna set the next timer, right? That's That guy's gonna time out for uh, half a second as well, or 500 milliseconds. Uh, and when this one is done, then this will no longer be true. So that should reset my, um, my first timer there. So these timers are just gonna bounce back and forth. Uh, and um, while this guy is timing for that 500 milliseconds, that's my on uh, portion, right? Uh, then I'm gonna have the timer timing from that light going to my flashing bit. Okay, looks good. So, and in all, obviously in order for this to work, I'm gonna have to keep my start push button uh, maintained. Okay, so we've made those changes. Now let's download to our PLC. Okay, let's turn it back to the run mode. Beautiful, okay. Oh, I already had the, the start push bit tied in there. Let's take that out for two seconds, okay. So we're back to the point where our accumulated value is at zero, right? The second, uh, sorry, the light on is, that's good, but I want this to be actually light off when this one's done. I don't want this one to, I don't want this one to turn off the timer, right? I want this one to turn off the timer, okay? So let's do this and let's change this to our light off timer. And I want that done bit. Sorry for the confusion. Okay, so I've made those changes. I'm gonna push that to the PLC by finalizing my edits. Beautiful, okay? So the second timer, the light off timer is done, not done yet. Uh, so it's waiting for me to hit the start push button. So let's do that now. Okay, I'm gonna maintain that. Oh, that's nice. Right on, so half a second delay between the on and the off. Okay, and you can see the TT, and I can physically see uh, that my light, you'll have to take my word for it, uh, that the light on my PLC is flashing on and off there. Beautiful, okay, so that seems to be working well. Um, can I change these on the fly? So maybe I want it uh, on for two seconds and off for one second. On for two seconds, off for one second. On for two seconds, off for one second. Beautiful. Nice. That's cool though, right? That you can you can change your uh, your preset value on the fly. That's very cool. Okay. Uh, if I go to two hundred and fifty milliseconds and two hundred and fifty milliseconds, now it's going really fast. The uh, the light on the actual. Um, here, let me pause for two seconds and I can show you the light flashing uh, at these different intervals. Hang on. 
Okay, so now we can actually see the uh, the output flashing there. So we're on output uh, number one there. So here we have 250 milliseconds. It's not seen. It's hardly being seen on. It's kind of randomly coming in and out on the uh, on the actual program. But you can see that the light is flashing at a quarter second there. Okay, let's see if we can go to 125 milliseconds and see if that's actually visible. Okay, still flashing, super super fast. Okay. The beauty of having these ones are transistor outputs, uh, so no problems on having them flash on the outputs are really fast. Uh, but I like the uh, the one second on and one second off. Beautiful, on for one second, off for one second. Cool. And obviously we can change our uh, the timing here. So if you did want it to have um, off for. Uh, like on for 200 milliseconds and then off for maybe like 750, then you can play around with your timing there on the flashing light. 500 milliseconds seems like a decent uh, value to get somebody's attention there. I like, okay, so um, let's add in uh, one more thing. Let's add in like a latch and an unlatch to our program here. So let's go offline here. Okay, so uh, let's start off with uh, two more rungs here. So hopefully, let's, let's take a step back. So hopefully everything's cool so far. Hopefully that you can see that uh, you can use two on-delay timers. You can set them for like 500 milliseconds. Um, and when one timer has finished timing, it turns on the next timer. And when this timer's finished timing, then it resets the first timer. So they're bouncing back and forth at the amounts that you set for the preset for either one of those guys. Uh, and then I used the light on because that was the one that I wanted to decide how long it was on for. So I used the light on and while it was timing out, that's what I have going to my actual light. Cool. Hopefully everything's cool there. You can stop the video here. I'm just gonna add one more thing in that the, the previous video was a latch and an unlatch, right? Uh, so I was just gonna add in uh, two other rungs here. Okay, this is cool too. Like say I put in the rung in the wrong position, I can grab this bad boy, bring it up till I see green and bring it above. Okay, so I need two rungs there. Uh, and then I'm going to have um, just two bits that come on, come on buddy. So I'm gonna have a high and a low uh, float. Come on. So I'm gonna have my uh, high level float here. Uh, that one was what? Uh, input two. Come on. Beautiful. And then this guy is going to be input number three. That's going to be our low level float. Come on, Peter. Beautiful. Uh, and then that's going to turn on my output number two, because I haven't used output number two yet, right? Yeah, the flashing light was output number one. Beautiful. Okay, so high level float is going to latch on uh, my, my pump, and then the low level float is going to unlatch that pump. Uh, that pump is going to be wired to output number two. And I should be able to now grab, I should be able to, can I type in pump? Nope, nothing comes up. Okay, so you can see that like, that's interesting too, right? If I put in pump, that it didn't grab uh, that same tag there, right? So let's go to our outputs. Let's go to output number two. Beautiful. Okay. So uh, and then while the uh, while the pump is on, then I want the flashing light to be on. So I'm going to have this one instead of my start push button. Uh, I'm going to use my outputs but not that output. I'm going to use my output number two. 
Beautiful. Okay, so now we've got uh, a high level float that once it hits the high level, then it's gonna turn the pump on, drain the water out of the tank. Uh, and once it, and it'll stay drain, it'll keep draining the tank, right? Because uh, it only has to hit the high level float once and it latches on the pump. Okay, so the pump is going to main, be maintained until it hits the low level uh, switch, okay, or low level float. And once it hits the low level float, it's going to unlatch the pump, sort of turn it off. So this one sends a, a one to the pump, this one sends a zero to the pump. Uh, and while the pump is on, then I want to flash a light at 500 milliseconds. Looks good. Okay, uh, let's get a couple things out of the way. So give me two seconds to move things out of the way. Uh, I'll download to the PLC and we'll see this how this works. And before I, I upload, you'll notice that uh, the light for my output is still flashing, if you can see that on your screen. Um, the reason why it's still flashing is because the previous program is still in the PLC and I still have my start push button pressed on my trainer. So if I stop pressing my start push button, then the input goes away and it uh, it no longer flashes. So that program is still there. Like if I hit my start push button again, then my previous program is still running in the background there. So we're going to replace that program now with our um, pump program here. So let's download that now. Okay, so let's take a look and see how this works. So let's see if the high level float was tripped, but that was input number two, uh, then that's going to turn or latch my uh, pump on. Then as it drained out, the high level float would no longer be true, but the pump is still latched on. And we can see that we have that flashing light at 500 milliseconds there. Beautiful. Then it's gonna get down to the lower float. Once it gets down to the lower float, then input number three would then be true. Uh, and once it's true, then it unlatches the, the pump, turns off the pump, and obviously turns off our timer there. Makes sense on paper, but doesn't really make sense in the real world because if the high level float was tripped, the low level float would be tripped as well, right? So if my low level float is tripped and the water level goes up to the high level, let's see whether this program will still work. So then the high level float would then be tripped and it looks like it doesn't latch on whatsoever. So that's not working out very well at all. Nothing's working, pump's not on, no flashing lights, nothing. So maybe a little bit of change to uh, this program, right? So let's take a look. Okay, so let's try this one um, as a different instruction. So I'm gonna change this to an XIO. Okay, so that once that one's, uh, once the water's below that point, then I want it to uh, unlatch the pump there. Okay, so I'm going to push that to the PLC by finalizing all edits. Beautiful, okay. So low level float has not been tripped, right? Then the water starts to uh, rise up. Here, let me just click over here so you can see everything. So water's gonna rise up. Uh, that means that the low level float would then be closed. Okay, then the water rises up to the high level float. Okay, so trips the input data two. Okay, latches the pump on, pumps on, starts to drain down. Our light is flashing, saying that the pump is still on and it's still draining down. Then it's going to drain below the low level float. Low level float uh, is still set until it gets below the level low level float. At that point, uh, that contact will open, which will unlatch the pump there. Beautiful. Now we've got something that'll actually work, right? So as the water rises, then it's going to close the low level float, which will make that uh, untrue. Rises up to the high level float trips the high level float, which turns our pump on by latching it in, starts to drain her down. And as it drains down, we have this flashing bit as it's latched in and drains down below the low level float, at which point, once it's below the low level float, the contact will open and then the low level float will be true. Beautiful. All right, guys, so now we've got a working program uh, for a sump pump which a, with a flashing light. Uh, if you know of other, any other ways to uh, to flash a light, um, I know of one other way, and I'll probably make another video on that. Uh, but if you know how to like, make use of a clock timer or something within the Allen Bradley environment, uh, I'd love to hear it. All right, guys, hopefully this helps. We'll see you in the next video.